Inventories. When we talk about inventories, we are focusing on a specific standard and that is PAS number 2 or Philippine Accounting Standards number 2. Please, please, ayog kalimti ang kaninga mga standards because um, latakabalo, pwede siya pangutan on sa exam, in the board exam to be specific. Or um, kung naakay gusto nga i-review about a specific account, gusto ba ni mo studyhan ang inventory, gusto ba ni mo studyhan ang financial assets, ang investments, it would be easy for you to scan kung anong, anong standard ang kailangan mong tingnan in relation to that account. So again, inventories is focused on PAS number 2 or Philippine Accounting Standards number 2. So first is the definition. What is an inventory? And allow me to share my screen. And okay, inventory. It is defined as an asset held for sale in the ordinary course of business, in the process of production for such sale, or in the form of materials or supplies to be consumed in a production process or in the rendering of services. So before the I, um, um, may I have a confirmation if okay lang ang ako ang audio? Ma'am. Okay, ra. Okay. Thank yes, ma'am. Okay. So, held for sale. That means, na kung naakay butang, na dili siya pe para ibaligya in the ordinary course of business. So, when we say ordinary course, mo na imong negosyo. So, kung naakay items na dili siya pang baligya in the ordinary course, or di yun na mao imuhang negosyo, then you cannot consider that as an inventory. For example, I am engaged in um, buying and selling of kanang let's say bugas so gapangumpra kong bugas nga gapamligya pong kong bugas and then there was a time na um, na ami na ami lote okay na ami lote dito as sa uh, somewhere and then naisip pud na kung ako siyang ibaligya ay held for sale so is that um, parcel of land considered an, as an inventory no Kasi hindi ko naman ordin hindi naman ako real estate. Hindi ko naman um, normal business transaction ng magbenta ng lupa. It was just an um, a special transaction or um, kanang transaction na once in a blue moon lang siya nga mahitabo. So I cannot I cannot consider that parcel of land as an inventory just because it is held for sale. Take note, sabi niya, held for sale in the ordinary course. So it's in the normal business transaction. Also, in the process of produc production, or um, let's say I am engaged in manufacturing. So, kaganina, trading to, buy and sell sa bugas. So, let's say I am engaged in manufacturing of furniture. So, gapamiligya ako bangko, gapamiligya ako lamisa, mga sofa, nga, nga na, let's say wood, mga, what's it, tawagan ng mga items. Basta ka mga wood ang main May, uh, main raw material. So, let's say, nga So, kami ang nagabuhat ang nga mga furniture. So, kato ako ang gipangumpra na mga kahoy or wood na gamito na ako for the manufacturing of those furniture na ako ang ordinary course of business. Those process or products, those materials or supplies are considered as part of my inventory. So, we are going to have a closer look on that pag-abot sa uh, later. Okay? But again, kung manufacturing ka, katong imuhang mga raw materials, so katong wood, um, lansang, varnish, ang sa pabay, pwede gamito na na pintura. So kato na mga gamit, mga materials ni mo, mga kinahanglan ni mo para makamanufacture ka at tong item or product na imong ginabaligya in your ordinary course of business, those materials are part of your inventory. Although naka-chop-chop na siya, you will have a, a deeper and a detailed study on that pag sa inyong advanced accounting. But we will have an overview of that later. Okay? So, ayun. Materials or supplies to be consumed in the production process or in the rendering of services. Okay? So, let's, um, nag-storya na tag-trading, nag-storya na tag-manufacturing, let's go to services. Ma'am, naanay gihapo inventories ang services? Yes. So, Let's say ang um, imuhang let's say ang imuhang business is um hmm sabay service like 
massage. So, unsa may pwedeng inventory sa imong massage? Haplas, di ba? That's part in in your rendering of services. So, pwede to nimo siya imong part sa imong inventory kan mga haplas, mga ointment imong ginagamit sa imong services. Okay? So, next, or kung transportation company baka pwede nimo i-appeal sa imong inventory ang imong mga sakyanan. Of course, that's part kung wala imong sakyanan, of course, di ka pwede maka-transport. So, next we have here inventories and compass goods purchased and held for resale. So, press sa trading, palit kong bugas, subject to resale. So, muna siyang pasabot, Ana. And you have it here. Muna akong giniingon ka ganina na when it comes to manufacturing, pwede na to i-chop-chop into a specific category ang ato ang mga inventories. So, we have here, dito sa baba, you have finished goods. Okay. Finished goods. Or, sige, let's start with, wag tayong mag-start sa finished goods. Let's start with raw material. So, balikan na to ang ato ang pag-manufacture o furniture. Ang ato ang raw materials, katong mga gamit na atong gamiton in the manufacturing of our final output is katong, um, ako na-mention ganina, your wood, your varnish, your mga lansang, pintura. Uh, liha, di ba? Part mo po na siya, ginalihaan man ito ng wood para masinaw and everything. So, kato nga mga raw materials, direct or indirect, when we say direct, kanang makita yung dayo ni mo and ma-measure ni mo. For example, kaning lamisa. So, this is, um, tila ba ni? 3 by 4 feet. So, kung ato ka sa market, mga utahan nakagpila yung yung 3 by 4 feet nga ingani, sa kla ingani nga klase sa wood. So, identifiable siya. So, we call it direct material. Whereas, ang kaning lansang, so, ihapon ni mag 1, 2, 3. So, indirect. So, bali, um, kailangan pa ni mo siya susihon pag ayo para makita ni mo and ma-measure ni mo ang cost. For example, ang varnish. Di man ni mo pwede, ah, kaning varnish, murag mga kung bali, 20 ang nagasto ani. So, indirect material siya kasi hindi mo siya ident um directly identifiable but all in all those are raw materials and kung kadto nga mga materials at the end of the year na ato sa imong bodega that means wala pa siya na convert into a furniture those are still considered part of your inventory under raw materials category so pag disclose na to sa tong financial statement di ba sa financial statement ang mugawas lang man kay one line item inventory andun na lahat nakasaksak na dito tanan pero pag abot sa imong disclosure or notes to financial statement dito nimo ipakita ang detailed um, breakdown of your inventory so nandun yung raw materials next you have your factory factory or manufacturing supplies Factory or manufacturing supplies. So, katong mga, um, siguro dili ra kaayo na to matrace ng mga supplies na gigamit na to sa, sa factory. Okay? Let's say, imuhang, ang imuhang martilyo, di ba, imuhang gaba. So, those are supplies na gigamit sa pag-manufacture or pag-produce sa imuhang furniture. So, ma'am, kanang band paper na gigamit na mo sa office, kanang computer na gigamit na mo sa office, kay para baka, maka transact, hindi naman siya manufacturing. I mean, hindi mo siya ginamit directly sa pag-manufacture. So, hindi yun siya kasali. Ibang asset yon, Okay? Those items or supplies na gigamit na to directly sa pag-produce sa product, mo na siya ang factory or manufacturing supplies. And then you have goods in process. So what if ang katong inyong wood is na hinayhinayan na ninyo o um, assemble? So let's say ang furniture nga gipabuhat is nagpabuhat og divider. And then ang divider kay katunga pa lang, katunga pa lang sa divider ang inyong nabuhat. So goods in process pa siya. So hindi pa siya tapos. That goods in process is still part of your inventory. And finally, the finished goods. So from the term itself, katong nahuman na na yun nato o buhat. So, ready for selling na siya. Pero hindi pa nabenta. Siguro na pa sa imuhang shop, naka-display. So, those are considered as finished goods. So, ito lahat ay part of your inventory. And these items are only applicable if you are a manufacturing concern. So, kung merchandising ka, wala kang raw material, wala kang finished goods, wala kang goods in process. Kasi pag trading ka, palit lang kag bugas, baligyan ni mo ang bugas as is walang conversion. So again, um, 
ang accounting for these items will be discussed in detail sa inyong advanced accounting. So, as for now, kana lang sa definition. And actually, kato ko mga gipang ingon, andito yun. Andito lang din yun. So, um, but I think, I presume nga nabasa ninyo siya. So, I think it helped ang explanation na akong gihatag. Now, let's have this goods includable in the inventory. As a rule, all goods to which the entity has title shall be included in inventory regardless, regardless of location. So, ma'am, what does this mean? Regardless of location. Na di mga panahon, ma'am, nga ang amuang inventory wala sa amu ang bodega or wala sa amu ang mga kamot? Yes. Let's say, um, nagpa-consign ka. Are you familiar with consignment? For example, nagbaligi ako desserts. And then, Nag-consign ko sa Foodsmart. Katoon mong Foodsmart. <laughs> Convenient store dito sa unahan. So, since dito man gadagsa ang mga tao and dili man diri sa among boarding house or diri sa, sa lugar kung asa ko gabuhat o dessert, so, akong gipa-consign dito. So, kung wala pa itong nagbaligya, then that means, kato nga inventory, ako agihapon, bisan pa og wala diri sa among balay or wala diri sa ako ang refrigerator. So, um, that's, uh, that's just an easy example of what it means by regardless of location. So, we will have a detailed study of consignment later. So, the phrase a passing of title is a legal language, which means the point of time at which ownership changes. So, kaning title nga word din ha? Title, titulo ba? Okay? Muna siya. Titulo. But not necessarily that the layman's term nga titulo nga atong madunggan, basta mamaligya tag yuta. But this just means the passing of ownership. Kinsa namang gyud ang tag iya ana nga inventory. So, na ay mga times nga um, at on December 31, ang inventory na ship na. So, wala na sa atong bodega. Pero, pag abot pod kay buyer, wala pa pod sa iya ha. Asa pa man ang inventory, naglutaw pa sa kadagatan. Now, the question is, who is the owner of that inventory? So, dapat na ay owner. Dili, pwede nga ang barko ang tag-iya ato. Is it the buyer or the seller? Duharagid na. The buyer or the seller? Dili, pwede nga carrier ang naasa option. So, uh, we will study it or we will analyze kung kinsagyod ang owner ang ito nga item. So, that's another example of regardless of location. But generally, sabi niya, eto, hmm, um, ito na ba yun? Ito, applying the legal test, the following items are includable in the inventory. First, the goods own and on hand. Of course, kung unsa tong naa sa imuhang, um, kung unsa tong naa sa imuhang vicinity, okay, kung unsang naa sa imuhang bodega or naa sa imuhang factory, muna ginas, ginapasabot nga on hand and you own it, Okay, so ikaw gidang tag iya, so dili kay gibilin lang sa imuha, then that is part of your inventory. So, wait lang mo to charge muna ako. And then, letter B, goods in transit and sold FOB des destination. So, ano ba yung FOB destination and FOB shipping point? So, I, I believe we already have an overview of that before. Ay, ayan. Naman di ay, nag-admit. Ma'am, i-exit daw si Eber. Eber? Wala naman si Eber. Okay, so, I will give this five. You man, give. But I think we have an overview of FOB destination and FOB freight. I mean, shipping points at to ang mga previous accounting courses. And sino ang owner, sino ang magbabayad ng freight, at sino ang app actual na nagbayad ng freight. So, medyo dugay siya. Ako na lang i-post later ang katong YouTube video. So, FOB, um, destination, and shipping point. So, you just have to study these items. Um, ayan. And then, goods out on consignment. The goods in the hands of salesman or agent. So, example, um, Maligyat ang kojik, natin mga agent. Of course, magdaladala mo dyan na product ang atong mga agent, di ba? Mga salesmen na to. 
kay para at least na pud sila ipakita sa ato ang mga potential customers. So kato nga mga products nga na silang mga kamot na wala pa nila na baligya, those are still considered part of our inventory kasi hindi pa nabebenta. Nasa kanila lang kasi kailangan nila yon para ma-market ang ato ang product. So that is again an example of regardless of location. Manaa sa ato or mga naa sa ato ang agent basta wala pa na baligya, that's part of our inventory. And then, held by customers on approval or on trial. So, ma'am, naan na daw sa ato ang customers? Ato aday gihapon ng inventory? Yes. Anong sabi? On approval or trial. Hindi pa sure kung kukunin niya or hindi. So, to be safe, wag mo mo nang alisin sa inventory mo. To be safe, isali mo sa inventory mo. Kasi hindi natin alam kung ia-approve niya ba or hindi. Sabi niya, trial. So, ganun ang trial, try-try pa lang, di pa final. So, naako no sa iya, pero hindi pa final na kukunin niya. So, again, isali mo yan. So, I have here my notes and I think there are some other items din na parts sa inventory ng seller. So, atong point of view diri ha kay seller. Um, so, I have here my notes. So, muna akong ginaingon that you will have your index card that will help you along the way. So, some other items that will be part of your inventory are these things. <clears throat> uh, product financing park sale. So, ibig sabihin, para siyang sale and lease back, pero may repurchase agreement. So, ibig sabihin, ako siyang gibaligya, pero nagsabot me nga, I have the right nga, ako siyang i-buy back, Okay? Palito na ako siya balik. So, kana siya nga inventory, kana siya nga item, although akong gibaligya sa iya ha, pero nami agreement na ako siya palito na balik, that's part of my inventory. What else? Inventory in the company siding. So, um, let's say, to ship na siya, pero ang truck na mag-ship unta, is naapagihapon sa ato ang parking lot. So, na mga ta times na yung anal, it, it seems funny, but yes. For example, sa atong bodega, na dito atong inventory, pero naapoy goods nga nasa truck. And then, ang truck na to, napasa ito ang parking lot, so wala pa siya nakalakaw, siguro mga lawn pa siya lakaw, or uba pa siya malakaw, whatsoever. Pero wala na to siya naapilog count, kasi wala nga siya dun sa bodega, so na nakalimtan, or what. Ato, abiguro na to, na, na ship na siya, or nakalakaw na siya sa ato ang premise, but still, wala pa di ay. So, those are part of our inventory gihapon. Um, what else? Loading dock waiting to pick up by the carrier. For example, ang truck, nakalakaw na. So, iyahan ng na hatod dito sa, sa, sa wharf. For example, dito sa wharf. So, nana siya sa dock. Um, waiting for loading. So, um, naghulat na lang ang inventories nga isakay sa cargo ship. Pero, since holiday man ang December 31, hindi siya na, wala siya na load or wala siya na sakay dito sa cargo ship, naalang siya dito sa wharf, still those inventories are ours. So, dili pa ito pwede nga ipasa sa buyer kay naapas sa ito ang vicinity. Okay? So, those items, some of the items na included gihapon sa itong inventory na wala na mention din hiya. Exception to the legal test. So, we have installment contracts. So, from the term itself, installment, um, this happens most of the time kung dinagko. For example, nagpalita o um, washing machine, di ba? Appliances, di ba? Installment man, kadalasan, labi na po mag-home credit ka. In the installment contracts, nakabutang dito nga, dili ni mapasa ang ownership sa imuha unless dili ka makabayad sa full amount. For example, lahi na lang nato ang kaning laptop. So, when I purchase the laptop, it's under the installment basis. So, I paid for this six months. So, the moment nga nag-down ko, gihatag din sa kuang item. But the question is, who is the owner of the item? Is it me or is it the, the company nga nagbaligya sa ako? Ah? In the legal test, kay in our contract, nakabutang man din to, nga dili pwede mabalhin sa ako ah, ang title unless di na ko mahuman o bayad. So, legally, in the legal sense, in form, ang laptop is not mine yet. Kasi hindi ko pa siya nabayaran lahat. I mean, hindi pa siya fully paid. So, um, it's, still the own, um, it's still owned by the company. Pero, ang physical possession is naana sa ako. Ah. Now, the question is, 
I mean, in accounting, it is accepted that um, ano, asa na to? The goods sold in installment are included in the inventory of the buyer. So, bisan di ay naasa among contract nga dili mapasa ang ownership unless di ko makabayad but in substance ang laptop ako ang nagyod so ako na siyang gigamit ako na siyang gibut ng files ako na siyang gidaladala ev anywhere everywhere so mura na siya og ako a ah. so in substance the laptop is already mine but in form because of the contract nga dili daw pwede maako unless dili ma fully paid own gihapon siya sa company but in accounting if magbuhat kong financial statement of myself or of my company or what, laptop is already included in my asset. Okay? Ako ana ni. Therefore, si seller dili na ni part sa iyahang inventory in substance. That's um, what we call substance over form. Okay? Ang form din to, ang contract. Pero nangibabaw gihapon ng substance because in a sense, the moment na akong nakuha ang laptop gikan sa ilahang shop or gikan sa company, ako na siyang gigamit as if it's my own. Okay? So, that's substance over form. But, um, basically, of course, they will have rights over it kung dili na ako siya mabayaran. So, pwede nila embargohon or what. So, after 6 months, nabayaran na ako siya, na fully pay, gihatagan na ko niya og certificate of title. So, that is a document that will prove that the asset or this laptop is mine and the ownership has already been passed to me after 6 months. But in substance, the first day pa lang na nakuha na ako, mura na siya huwag ako ah. Okay? So, eto. Tandaan mo lang yan, in installment basis, hindi nakasali si inventory sa, I mean, hindi nakasali ang inventory dun kay seller. Kay, kay kinsa naman siya kay buyer. Okay. Eto, FOB destination. So, ibig sabihin, free on board destination. So, kung ako or kung kita ang nipalit, kita si seller, and then destination siya, um, ibig sabihin, libre padulong sa destination. Okay? Let's say, let's say the free on board means, free, uh, the FOB means libre. Therefore, ang mushoulder ana is si seller. Okay? So, um, just analyze it. FOB destination. Kung kita ang buyer, kita ang destination, right? So, kung free on board, hangtod sa ato ah, therefore, during na naglayag pa na siya din ha sa karagatan, ang owner ana is si seller. Kay ana siya, free on board, hangtod maabot sa ato ah. So, siya ang mo shoulder tanan. Therefore, at December 31, kung kita ang nag-purchase and then FOB destination, dili na ato ah, kay seller na. So, balihon na to. What if kita si seller? And then, FOB destination. Ibig sabihin, buyer, libre, hangtod sa imuhang bodega. Ako'y mo shoulder, hangtod sa imuhang bodega, hangtod sa destination. So, on December 31, kung kita ang seller, and then, ang inventory is naapa sa kadagatan, kita ang tag-iya. Therefore, add it to your inventory. Shipping point, on the other hand, is ganito. Libre, Hanggang shipping point. Sino bang shipping point? Si seller. That is the shipping point. So, kung kita si buyer, and then libre hangtod shipping point, so hangtod din to lang, so kita na ang mubayad pagtabok sa dagat. So, kung kita mubayad, atua ang inventory. Okay? Kung kita po si seller, and then FOB shipping point, so ibig sabihin, libre kotob lang diri sa akong bodega. Libre kutub lang sa ako ang territory. So, mugawas na sa akong territory, hindi na yan kasali sa akin. So, ibig sabihin, kay buyer na. So, pag December 31, nakagawas na siya, and then shipping point ang ato ang freight term, exclude it in our inventory. Okay? And then, um, apa na siya sumpay? Freight collect and freight prepaid. FOB shipping point and FOB destination, ibig sabihin lang yan, sino ang magbabayad? Magbabayad. Kinsa ang oblige na mubayad sa freight terms. I mean the freight charge. But this freight collect and freight prepaid states, C 
sino ang nagbayad? Okay? FOB destination, sino magbabayad? FOB shipping point, sino magbabayad? Freight collect, sino nagbayad? Pag sinabing freight collect, mura lang na siya cash on delivery. Kinsa man ang nagbayad kung cash on delivery. Di ba si buyer? Kung mag-online ka, mag-online mag shop ka, let's say mag-shopee ka, and then naka-cash on delivery, pag-abot ana ni JNT sa inyuhang balay, ikaw mo bayad sa freight and the items as well. So, muna siyang ginatawag na freight collect or cash on delivery. Freight prepaid, on the other hand, si seller na ang nagbayad. So, pag-abot ni JNT, igo na lang kamo dawat sa items. So, that's freight prepaid. The one who paid is seller. So, kung si destination and freight prepaid mag-uban, wala tayo problema. FOB destination, si seller ang magbabayad. Freight prepaid, si seller din ang nagbayad. So, wala problema. Smooth ang transaction. Shipping point, si buyer magbabayad. Freight collect, si buyer din ang nagbayad. So, smooth din ang transaction. So, there will be a complication if shipping point and then freight prepaid or destination and then freight collect. But I'm uh, I'm sure na ito na nang na-discuss in our previous accounting courses. So, the, the journal entries, if you want to review, then just visit your notes in your accounting 2 and um, FAR, if I'm not mistaken. Now, we have other shipping terms ma here. Yes? Excuse, ma'am. Ah, yes. Naday mo sulod, ma'am. Ay, okay. Thank you. Ay, ang dami nila. Sige. Ingni lang ko, ha, kung na ay mga kakulian. <laughs> Kasi hindi ko makikita. As you, as you could see, walang notification. Ay, ang dami pa rin. Ay, ang dami pa rin. Sayang naman. Okay lang. So, um, asan ako? Eto. Some other freight terms. So, we have free alongside. So, that's FAS. So, ibig sabihin hanggang sa dock. I have here my notes. And, kay wala mang stylus ang ako ang phone. I mean, wala stylus akong laptop. So, listen kay mag-drawing-drawing. So, allow me na lang to to share this one. Ay, nag-chat day sila. Hindi ko napansin. Sorry po. FAS. Free alongside. So, hanggang, hanggang sa dock. Hanggang sa wharf. Hanggang dun lang. And then the rest, si buyer na. So, kung kinsa ang majority nga mo, mo shoulder sa tibuok biyahe sa imuhang shipment, siya ang magbabayad. So, kung si seller hanggang dito lang, kasi sa dock lang naman daw siya kutob, and then si buyer na for the rest of the trip, then the owner of that item or that inventory is the buyer. Muna yung ginatawag na free alongside. We also have here the CIF or cost insurance freight. So, sabi dito, si buyer ang magbabayad sa cost ng items, ng insurance, siya kanyang freight charge. So, halos siya na lahat. And therefore, si buyer na din ang may-ari. And then lastly, ex-ship. Ang ex-ship naman, sabi niya, si seller na ang magbabayad or si seller na bahala hangtod sa ma-unload ang items dito kay buyer. Unload, pasabot. Manaog sa cargo or from the term unload. Manaog sa cargo. So, gikan sa ako ang bodega, padulong sa wharf, hangtod ma-load, ma-load, pasabot, masakay sa cargo, and then mo biyahe sa dagat, and then ma-unload na po dito sa cargo ship, si seller bahala. So, majority, so, unsa na lang man ang buhato ni buyer? Gikan sa wharf, igot na lang niya i-pick up. So, majority of the trip, si seller ang nag-shoulder. So, if that's the case, who is the owner of the inventory? Katong majority, who is the majority? C seller. So free alongside and CIF. If mauni ang ato ang mga shipping terms, buyer is the owner. But if X ship seller is the owner. Okay, lastly, consigned goods before we check your assignment. Consigned goods is I think ako ning na mention kaganina. This is when na magbilin taog inventory sa some other stores or some other persons or shop etc. So for example, I am selling desserts, okay, nagabaligya ako or nagabuhat ko og cakes, pastries, um, ito pa ba? Munchkin, 
and um, some other things. Dessert. And then, yan to ko sa, sa G-Mall. Di ba, kabantay mo sa G-Mall dahil mga consignment, or let's say sa Watsons na lang, na mga consignment. Di ako familiar sa Watsons eh. So, na mga items din ha, nga dili na Watsons ang brand. Lahi ang brand. Pero, na siya sa Watsons nga shop or store. Okay, because may, a cousin of mine happened to work in Watsons. So, sabi niya, ay, kuan man ang product eh, consigned lang man na, sabi niya sa akin. So, ah, so hindi yan Watsons. Hindi, kaya mas mahal. O, mas mahal, syempre, magbayad pa sila sa Watsons, magbayad pa sila sa sales lady, kasi may sales lady specific doon sa Watsons na kanto lang dyan sa consigned goods. So, di siya manghilabot sa Watsons na product. So, if you happen to go to Watsons, especially the ladies, and then, akay makita dito nga stall, nga tanawon ni mo ang product, walang Watsons na nalaka, nakalagay, tapos manguta na kag about, let's say, lotion, um, miss ka ng, unsa ni siya, ngayon ni, ngayon SPF and everything, tapos sasabihin ng babae na, ay, siya lang pangutan, akay, ka ng, siya man nakabalo. So, ibig sabihin, hindi niya alam. So, if makita po ni mo nga maraglain iyang uniform, pasabot, lahi to siya. Um, bantay lang to siya or siya ang sales lady sa kantong consigned goods. So, those are items na gibilin lang sa Osaka shop. Now, kung kita si Watsons, let's say na ay lotion din to, panganlan na lang na itong M&M, M&M, parang pagkain lang ah, candy, M&M lotions, M&M lotions, sige, M&M beauty products. So, kung kita si Watson and then si M&M, Nagbilin siya og items sa ato a ah, for selling. Kana ba nga items included sa ato ang inventory? The answer is no. Hindi naman sa atin 'yon kay invent kay M&M 'yon. Pero gibilin lang sa ato a. Ah. Now ma'am, unsa man ang advantage sa ato a ah, kung gibilin to? May commission si Watsons. So kung si M&M katong product na M&M nga gibilin sa ato a ah, is nabaligya na ay commission na makuha si Watson. So, ang iyahal lang ato is commission, not the inventory. Mura ragog ka nang magbili ng buko juice sa tindahan. Kaya magbili na kong buko juice, buko juice, buko juice, buko juice. Every baligya, sa every time nga makabaligya kag buko juice, piso ang padulong sa imuha. Diba? Naman ay mga ingana. That piso is the commission. So, kanang buko juice dili na tag-iya sa tindera imuha gihapon na nagbilin lang ka and then hatagan lang nimo sa commission so kinsa dito ang consignor kinsa si consignee ang consignor ang katong tag-iya sa products so in the case of Watsons si M&M ang katong tag-iya sa product siya ang consignor and Watsons there katong gibilinan is the consignee Okay, consigner, consignee. The question is, who is the owner of the product? Basically, si consignor. So, kung mag-cash, I mean, mag-inventory count si Watsons, kung mag-prepare o financial statement si Watsons at year-end, hindi niya isasali yung items or products ni M&M. Kasi consignee lang siya. Pag-abot po kay M&M, sa iyang bodega, pag mag-prepare na siya o financial statements, mag-count na siya dito sa iyang inventory, isasali niya yung consigned goods na iyang gibilin kay Watsons. Kasi siya ang consignor ato. So, even though naasa Watson store, apil gihapon to sa iyang inventory. So, i-add gihapon to niya. Muna yung ginatawag na consignment. Now, freight and handling charges on goods on consignment are part of your cost of goods or cost of sale. So, gikan sa bodega ni M&M, gitravel, padulong sa Watson store. So, that's transportation expense, unta. But since ang pag-travel or ang pag-transport is in connection with consignment, hindi siya transportation expense, kundi part siya sa cost of goods. So, for example, nag-produce ka sa product o um, imong nagasto lang is 20%. Okay? Pero pag biyahe niya na masahe mo kag dos, so 20 dos na ang cost sa product. Okay? Magkaiba siya sa transportation expense. Again, this is in line with the consignments. Now, ang terms, I mean, 
Osay malibog ta. Um, Ma'am, unsa mako diri? Ako si consignor o si consignee? Because we have learned, right, that consignor is the owner. So, when it says that, pag muingon siya, um, goods held out on consignment, ikaw si consignor. So, take note of that. Pag muingon si problem da, you have, um, 5,000 of goods are held out on consignment. Pasabot, nag-consign ka, ikaw si consignor. Pero pag muingon siya, goods held on consignment or held for consignment. So, held. Siya pasabot sa held. Ikaw nagunit. So, kung ikaw nagunit, consignee lang ka. So, kung consignee ka, wag mong isali. Kasi hindi yan sa'yo. So, yan yung mga terms. So, medyo malibog to sa grammar, pero sabta lang. Held out, held on, or held for consignee. Held out, for consignment, consignor ko dira. Okay, so, na din hiingon siya. There's an example. A consignee, ayan, obvious naman. A consignee sells consigned goods for 100,000. This amount is remitted to the consignor less commission of 15,000 and advertising of 2,000. So, what if, balikan natin si Watson's, what if, May ginawa si Watson. Sabi niya na, Uy, M&M, parang hindi naman mabenta yung products mo. Advertise natin. Sabi naman ni M&M, Go! Kinsa may mabayad at itong advertising, kinsa may naka-benefit in the first place, si M&M. Therefore, katong advertising na nagasto ni Watson, babayaran yun ni M&M. Okay? So, ayan. Therefore, katong 100,000 na sales ni consignor, Ayan, magjo-journal entry na si consignor. Okay? Kay kinsa ning journal entry? Consignor, hindi consignee. Mag-journal entry na si consignor, nakabaligya na daw siya 100,000. But actually, hindi 100,000 pesos in cash ang marireceive niya. Bakit? Babawasan ng komisyon na ibibigay kang consignee. Babaya, babawasan din ng advertising na 2,000 as refund doon sa ginastos ni consignee. So, eventually, ang ma-receive na lang na cash ni consignor is 83000 On the other hand, the journal entry of the consignee, di naman sinali dito, pero let's discuss it na lang para makita na ang mirror effect. So, consignee, on the other hand, will record commission, um, I mean, cash, that's 15000 and commission income, 15,000. Okay? So, si commission income, other income yun. Hindi yun pwede yung isali as sales. Kasi hindi mo naman product yun. So, sales, um, para lang sa imuhang sariling product. So, this time, commission income lang siya. So, debit cash, 15,000. And commission income na 15,000. So, moto siya ang um, entry ni consignee. Okay? So, with this, Yan, diniscuss ko pa in detail. So, I hope um, I have all the reasons para sabihan kayo na na wala tayong na-miss. So, I wait. Okay? So, I will stop presenting. Sao na dito pag stop presenting. So, hindi na ako magsistop presenting na lang. Okay, so I hope na nasubmit na ang inyong assignments and then we will check it. Let's begin with the first problem and that is Number first, amiable. Amiable company. So, nakikita nyo ang lahat ng ganap sa screen ko. Wala naman akong tinatago. Amiable company, we are required to compute the correct amount of inventory, right? So, atong tanawon din hi kung, kung ato abani or dili. Okay? So, eto. Lalagyan ko ng, ano ba lalagay ko? Yes na lang. Ay seller. Ay plus. Ganyan, plus na lang. Kung ano lalagay. Okay? So, plus, minus. Compute the correct amount of inventory. Okay. Amiable company provided the following data at year end. And, seselect natin. Okay, kung saan dyan ang kasali sa inventory natin. First, items counted in the bodega. Those are inventories on hand. Of course, kasali yan. Sabi ko, you should have your calculators beside you, notes, some other things, your assignment, para 
matulungan tayo sa pag-assess ng ating understanding. Next, items included in the count. Ayan, na-appeal daw dito sa ato ang pag-count dito sa bodega. Segregated per sales contract. So, the question is, kasali po ba siya? Specifically segregated for sales contract. Um, PAS number 2, sabi niya na, if those uh, if there are inventories na specifically segregated, ang other term niyan is special order. Pag naay mga special orders, and then nahumana na na siya process, wag mo na siyang isali kay buyer na yan. Although naapa siya sa itong bodega, waiting for pickup, hindi na sa atin yan. Pero sabi niya, na-include daw sa count. Pwede alisin mo, kasi hindi sa atin. Next, items in receiving department. So, wala sa itong... Ma'am, lagi ko an, ma'am. Kanang, pick, ah. kanang, wala may makita sa screen. Ay! Ah, okay. Sige, wait lang po. Hindi pala yun ang nakashare. Sige po. Okay, so... Ako apo, black lang. <laughs> okay, sorry po. May gani kay... Napo daw manulod, ma'am. Opo, okay na. May gani kay... Dili pa kayo layo. Okay, so balikan natin. That is amiable company. So, ito yon Yun yung sinasabi kong kay bodega. Okay na ba? Nakita na? Okay. So, items included or counted in the bodega, that's items or inventory on hand. So, kasali yun, of course. Pero... Sabi niya, included in the count, dun sa 4 million, items na specifically segregated for a specific sales contract. So, other terms nito, pwedeng gamitin ni problem na special order, item segregated for special order, item segregated for sales contract, huwag mo nang isali yun. Although, naapa sa imong bodega, pero specifically segregated kay buyer na yan. Waiting for pickup. Next. Ito naman, mga items to na wala sa bodega. Andun sa receiving department pa. Sabi dito, items that are returned but in good condition. So, ibig sabihin, pwede pang ibenta ulit. Di natin na lang bakit niya ni-return. Siguro sobra itong ipadala for dili, dili day to mao ihang ipalit, kaya niya binalik. So, i-add mo na lang din. Ma'am, dili pa dahil siya appeal dili sa 4 million. Hindi pa. Andito pa nga siya sa receiving department. Wala pa sa bodega. Okay, and then next, items ordered and in the receiving department, pero hindi pa natin na na-receive ang resibo. So, nauna ang nauna ang items bago ang resibo. So, ang ato ang concern there is inventory man, dili man ang accounts payable. <laughs> paki paki silent po ng ating mga audio. Okay. So, ah nagita. Ayan. Naan na ang items, naan na ang inventory, pero ang resibo wala pa. ba ang ato ang basihan bago ta mo record o accounts payable or purchases? ba Remember your practice set sa accounting too, right? Merchandising. Pero may ginta mangita o resibo. Mangita ta o sales invoice, purchase invoice, bago ta mo record o entry. So this time, wala pang entry, pero andyan na yung items. Ang tinatanong naman is inventory. So, hindi natin concern si accounts payable. So, i-add natin yan. Although, wala pang resibo. Magulat pa kag-resibo bago ni mo ihapon nga nanas imuhang puder ang mga items. Kaya, add. Next, items ordered, invoice received. Ayan. This time, nauna yung resibo. Pero, ang goods wala pa. So, napa siya sa dagat na lutaw-lutaw. And, sabi dito, freight is paid by seller. Ay, si seller pala nag-shoulder. Kinsamanta din eh. Buyer ta, ba? Kay kita ang nag-order. So, kung si seller nagbayad sa resibo, o oh, edi, sa kanya, hindi natin yan pag-aari. So, wag mong isali. Ma'am, dili po i-minus. Ano i-minus man mo? I-mo din ang gi-add ka ganina, gi-appel din mong i-hop. Wala. So, ignore. Di yan kasali. Kay, buy, ay, kay seller pa yan. Next, Items ship today. So, sino tayo dito? Tayo si seller. Atong gi-ship. Ato na pong gipadala ang resibo. And ang term is FOB shipping point. Ano sa'yo pasabot sa shipping point? Pasabot, kutub lang sa ato ang puder. 
outside that, outside of our premise, si buyer na ang bahala. Kay si buyer naman ang bahala, o didili na naato ah. And then, another thing to ignore. Kay buyer na yan. Ito naman, on the other hand, tayo pa rin ang seller na mail na po ang resibo, pero FOB destination. Ibig sabihin, kita ang bahala, kutub, hantod sa maabot siya sa destination. That means, kung napana sa dagat ron, ato agihapon na. Ato agihapon ng cargo. Okay? Cargo di konsensya, agihapon na ito na. So, that is included in our inventory. Next, items currently being used for window display. Ayan. Display pa lang. Di pa nabibenta. So, understandable naman. And then, items on counter for sale. O, oh, andun din. Nakadisplay din. Hindi pa nabibenta. O, edi atin din. Next, items in receiving department. Ayan. Siguro, gibalik na po ni. Refused by us because of damage. So, ayan. Purchase, I mean, sales return. Returned by a customer. Kaso, wala na ito gidawat kay damage. So, ato rin hapon nang ibalik kay customer. So, yahan na ng sala, nganong nadaot. So, di na tamo dawat, Ana. So, huwag mo siya, huwag mo siya isalim. Di po siya i-minus, ma'am. Di lipo, doon mo na ito nag-i-appilong ihap na nina. Next, items included in count, damaged and unsaleable. Ito naman, gi-appil na itong ihap. Pero, hindi na pala siya pwedeng ibenta. Ang sa ganitong inventories, held for sale. So, kung hindi naman pala siya saleable, o oh, edi, huwag mong isali. Minus kasi, di count ni mong appeal kaganina. So, kung niingon siya dira, items not included in count, damaged and unsaleable, edi ignore. Hindi mo sinali sa count, hindi rin pwedeng ibenta, o edi, huwag i-add, huwag din i-deduct. But this time, sabi niya, included in count, so, minus, kasi hindi dapat. Next, items in the shipping department. Ayun, andun pa. Andun pa sa office, hindi pa na si ship. Silent, wala naman siyang sinabi kung segregated ba for special order or what. Basta andun lang siya naka, makatambay. <laughs> Waiting for shipment. So, i-add mo na lang din. Kasi hindi pa nakaalis. So, you have 4 million. Sige, calculators out. You have 4 million minus 100 plus 50 plus 400 plus 150 plus 200 plus 800 minus 50 plus 250. I, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I think that's 5 million 700,000. Right? So the answer is 5 million 700,000. That's for amiable company. Let's try to look at your answers. Tingnan natin. Ano may? Ito na lang. Di, hindi naman makikita kung sinong nag-answer ng specific. But, ayan. That's only 4 out of 16 who submitted outputs. Only four got the correct answer. Not bad. At least you learned. Next, 10-2, we have Natal Company. Natal Company provided the following information. Again, we are going to compute for the correct amount of inventory. So, ganun pa rin. Materials. Ito si Natal Company, this is um, more, of, more of a manufacturing concern. Kasi may finished goods siya, may materials siya, may... Ayan. So... Ma foresee na to nga manufacturing ni siya. So first materials, raw materials included. Ito advance for materials ordered. Anong ibig sabihin ng advance for materials ordered? Sabak sa motor. Um ibig sabihin lang nito, nag-order tag materials tapos nag advance payment ta. Grabe ka cooperative sa mga silingan. Oy, sabak ayo. So, nag advance payment ta. Kung nagbayad dai ka, na na din kay inventory. Wala pa man siya niingon nga naabot na. So, kung siya isali. Basta nagbayad lang tayong advance. Next, um, goods in process. Okay. Di ba goods in process? Kasali siya. Ba raw materials, manufacturing and factory supplies, goods in process, saka finished goods. Di ba yun? 
we have unexpired insurance. That's insurance, prepaid insurance. That's another asset, right? So, hindi an inventory. Next, advertising catalogs and shipping cartons. Ay, ma'am, supplies. Supplies nga, pero saan ba na supplies? Sa factory supply, hindi. Sabi niya, shipping carton. So, that is a shipping supply. Hindi na yan siya kasali dun sa product mismo. Okay? So, hindi rin yan kasali sa supplies. I mean, sa inventory. May specific um, account din siya, which is supplies. So, next we have finished goods. Ayan, kasali. Ito naman, finished goods in company retail store, including 50% profit on cost. So, sabi niya, uh, wala sa factory. Naana sa ato ang store. Pero ang 750,000 kasali dyan ang profit na 50%. Therefore, you have um, 750,000 divided by 1.5. Okay? And how much is that? 750,000 divided. Kasi sabi niya, nanay markup na 50%. Ah, so if that's the case, ang cost lang di ay ana is 500,000. Thousand. Okay, so this 500,000 add. Ay. Nakuha to ha, kung anong 500,000 lang, kasi appeal na sa 750 ang imuhang markup or imong halin. So, kung mag-compute ang inventory, we use at cost. Okay? Not at sales price. Finished goods in hands of consignees. Okay? Na daw tayo finished goods. Naa sa consignee. So, sino ka dito? Consignor ka. Naa sa consignee na to, 400,000. Pero ka ng 400,000, appeal na ang 40% profit on sales. This time naman, hindi siya profit on cost. So, dapat kasi, ano to? Item to ng cost accounting, pero since wala pa man mong nagkuhag cost accounting, so explain ko na lang. So, you have here your sales price. Para makuha lang nato ang concept ato. We have your cost. Sales price minus the cost, you have your profit or your gross profit. So, this is cost accounting in a nutshell. So, let's say na akay item nga tag 100 100 imo hang gasto. Gibaligya nimo og um tag 120. Ayan. So pilang imong halin, you have 20 pesos, right? So, pag muingon ta og gross pro kung tan-aw na to ang 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 rate, pwede ta mo tan-aw din hinga ang sales price atong base. So when I say base, that's 100% Pwedeng siya ang ato ang base, 100%. So, the question is, on for 120, pila ka present si 100 and si 20? Ayan, bungkig. So, let's say, ano na lang? Um, 150. Bungkig, hapon. Sige na lang, 120 na lang. Okay. So, if 120 is the 100%, Pila ka present si 100 kang 120, pila ka present si 20 kang 120. So, simple lang, that's 100 divided by 120. So, that is, wait lang ha. May mga items kasi or may mga um, concepts na I think hindi nyo pa alam kasi wala pa kayong cost accounting. So, that's 83% si Profit naman, that's 20 divided by 120, so that's 17%. So, i-add mo ang 83 tsaka yung 17, mag equal siya sa 100%. Pwede ganyan, or pwede din nating i-change. Ito ang gawin nating 100%. So, kung kanisi 100%, pila ni, pila pud ni. So, 120 is what percent of 100? So, that's um, that is 20. And 120 is what percent of 100? 120. So, yung nga na lang ang dula. 
um, pag wingon tag base, kung asa siya nag base, mo to ibutang as denominator. So, sa first sa first um scenario, ang ato ang base is ang sales price. That is why dire a that's 100 divided by kaning base. Ayan. Dito naman, 20 divided by ang base. Ayan. Sa second scenario, ang atong base, kanina da yung 100. So, pag abot dire, that's 20 divided by base. Or, 120 divided by ang base. So, ayan. Dito, 50% profit on cost. So, the term there is on cost. Ibig sabihin, ang imuhang base kay si kani. Okay? So, ang ihang gigamit is kani nga concept. So, if that is 50% daw ang profit, so kung 50 ni dire, dire 100, kaya mo man imuhang, imuhang basis, so therefore, your sales price is 150. That's why we, we divide it into 1.5. Remember? Ayan. Pero dito naman, sabi niya, on sales. Therefore, ang ato ang base, kani. So, kani nga scenario iyang gigamit. So, if that's the case, pila daw to? 400. So, that is uh, 400 on sales. 400. Ay, tama ba? 400. Kani. This is 400. And then, that's... This is 40%. So, kani di ay is 60. 40% man daw. 40% profit on sales. So, this is 40%. So, how much is this? That's 60%. Therefore, your cost there is 400 times 60%. And that is 240,000. Okay? So, medyo libog siya, no? Kasi sa cost accounting pa kasi ito eh. Yung sinali dito. So, your 400 there is ito. Dito, 400. And then, sabi niya, 40% daw. So, kung 40% ni, dapat ka ni 60%. So, the question is, pila ang cost? Kasi ang atong ginapangita kay ang cost man, di ba? Kani. So, that is 400, which is the 100%, times kaning 60%. So, that's 240. Kung gamito na to itong kaganina, nga 50% profit on cost, so that is dire ang 100, right? 100, tapos ito is 150, para mag 50% on cost ta. So, this is 750. Ito pala. 750. And then, this one is 750 divided by 1.5. So, that's 500. So, things like that. So, i-review na lang ang ako ang explain kung medyo nalibog mo. So, let's proceed. So, this is 240 and is this included? Yes, that's included. Although, wala sa ato ah, kay na akang consignee. Next, F, uh, finished goods, FOB shipping point. I mean, FOB destination. Kinsa ta dere? Kita si seller. Medyo naliwag na ko. Inhale, exhale. Proceed. Kita si seller, nagbaligya tag FOB destination. So, if it is FOB destination, kitay mo sagot. Finished goods out on approval. So, pag out on approval, dili pa sure kung palito ni, ni buyer or ni customer. So, add. Unsaleable. Unsaleable naman pala. Hindi wag mo isali. Office supplies, office supplies, hindi siya inventory. Next, materials in transit. So, kita si buyer, bibili tayong materials. Tapos, FOB shipping point. Ay, hanggang dun lang ang libre. So, kita na ang mubayad. So, that's 330. Pero, may 30,000 30, na freight. Hindi ka sali sa 330. Question, isa sali po ba si freight na 30,000? Yes. Remember pag mag-compute ta o cost of sale, how do you compute your net purchases? You have purchases minus purchase returns and allowances minus purchase discount plus freight in. Ito, freight in to. Kasi 
FOB shipping point. And tayo si buyer. Therefore, 360,000. And that's a plus. Lastly, goods held on consignment. Ano siya pasabot, Ani? Ikaw si consignor or consignee? We are just the consignee. So kung consignee, hindi kasali. So that's 1.4 plus 650 plus 2 million plus 500 plus 240 plus 250 plus 100 plus 360. That would be 5.5 million. That's 5.5 million total amount of inventory. And let's try to see if, okay, we have... Okay, very good. We have 11 out of 15 who got the correct answer. Very good. Next, Luminous Company. Still, we are required to compute the cost of inventory at the end of the year. And just like the other problem, this is manufacturing concern. Kasi may finished goods na naman. So, let's start. Finished goods in storeroom at cost, including overhead of 400. Itong mga overhead, ito yung mga indirect materials. So, yung mga lansang, katong varnish, katong liha, nga dili ni mo, directly traceable sa imuhang items. So, that is 2 million. So, add. Finished goods in transit. So, kita ang namaligya o finished goods. And this is FOB shipping point. So, kung shipping point, kay buyer na. Oh, huwag mo na isali. Kay buyer na pala. Next. Finished goods held by salesman at selling price. Held by salesman. Di ba pag held by salesman kay atua pa man eh? Right? Pero, sabi niya, ang cost ay 100. Ay, doon tayo sa 100. Huwag sa 140. Huwag pa man na baligya. Okay? So, 100. So, 140 ang baligya, pero ang cost, 100. So, 100. Next, goods in process, 720. I would want to make this problem uh, a bonus na lang. Okay? So, pero kung na mga makatama, bonus, so, so may score lahat, Pero kung nay nakatama, I will have another uh, additionals, additionals, additional point. Okay? So, bakit, bakit bonus ma'am? Kasi, ang topic na to is more of cost accounting. And I think, wala pa muna abot na rin cost accounting. So, delete ninyo ni siya mag -get. So, this 720, sabi niya, cost of materials and labor. Pag manufacturing concern, manggod ka, you have materials and direct labor plus indirect materials and indirect labor. Sometimes we call it overhead or manufacturing overhead. So, 720, kailangan pa na siya dungagan o overhead. And how much is the overhead? Based din hi, ah, ang imuhang overhead is your overhead is actually 400,000 divided by 2 million and that is 400 divide 2 million, that is 20%. I mean, that's 20% overhead. So, kanis si 720, kulangan pa siya 20%. So, that is just 80%. 720 is 80% of the total cost. So, 720 divided by 0. 0.8, so that's the total cost is 900,000. So, kung may nakakuha naman ng 900,000, the better. Pero kung wala, it's okay. So, 900,000, let's add that one. Kasi goods in process. Let's just have the concept. Goods in process, add mo pa rin. Materials na 1 million, that's another add. Materials in transit, FOB destination, so nag-order tag materials. FOB destination, therefore, si seller ang mag-shoulder hangtod maabot sa ato. Ah. So, hindi yan sa atin. Defective materials returned to suppliers for replacement. So, kita ang nagbalik sa atong supplier. So, um, gibalik na to sa atong supplier, pero iya tong ilisan. So, add. 
ilisan man niya. So, add inventory gihapon. Shipping supplies, no. Gasoline and oil for testing finished goods, we call this indirect materials. So, add yan. Factory, ano to? Factory supplies. Yung gasoline and oil. Hindi siya shipping. Factory supplies siya. So, i-add. And then, machine lubricant, still, ginagamit din natin sa factory. So, that's add. Therefore, your total inventory is 2 million plus, I mean, 2 million plus 100 plus 900 plus 1 million plus 100. 110 tsaka 60. Therefore, we have a total of 4,270. 4,000,27. And, ayan, as expected, walang nakakuha ng tamang answer. But it's okay. Like what I've mentioned, bonus na yun. Okay. At least we have um, the concept naman. Okay, so this time let's proceed to our um, to the discussion and also um, to discussion na wag tangman. Okay, na wala ayan. So we're done over here. So let's proceed. Statement presentation. Inventories are generally classified as current asset. One line item as inventory. So, na-discuss na po nato na kabalo na taana. And then, in the notes, dito na nato ibutang ang breakdown sa tuwang inventory. Now, accounting for inventories, we have two, the periodic and perpetual system. So, just a review of what are these inventory systems. So, periodic, we use the account purchases. So, um, most of the time, ginagamit ang periodic system kung Balke na mga inventories. For example, um, ang imuhang ang imuhang man, ang imuhang sir, imuhang business is about trading. So, nag-buy and sell kag mga goods, mga pagkaon. Let's say, convenience store ba na ang imuhang business. So, balke na mga inventories. Bulk. So, dinaghan. Ang kadalasan na ginagamit na inventory system sa ina nga klase sa business is periodic. Perpetual system, on the other hand, um, this is more applicable for inventories or for businesses ng ilahang inventories. Gamay lang, pero dagko ang amount. Okay? Gamay ang count, pero dagko ang amount. For example, kung ang imuhang prakal ni um, saba, kanabang nagabaligya o sakyanan, di ba? So, gamay lang, siguro na alang sa mga 50 kabuk ilang sakyanan, gamay lang, pero mahal. Okay, mahal ang kantidad sa kada isa. So, the most applicable inventory system that you could use is the perpetual. So, ano bang meron sa perpetual? You are you are maintaining a stock card. So, sa kuang mga um, discussion before, example, ang imuhang stock card kay index card. So, nakabutang din hi, kung unsa example, car unit um, Nissan Terra 2020. So, na ako ay duha ka buok. So, lalagay ko sa stock card. Tapos, every time nga makabenta ko, of course, dili man po dinaghan ang, ang sale kada adlaw. So, dili rahasol on my part nga ilista ang, I mean, i-update ang ako ang index card or stock cards every time na makabaligya ko. Hindi siya applicable sa periodic. Like, imagine na kung namaligya ka convenience store and then every product na akay stock cards. For example, na kay Tide Bar. And then, every day, hala, akong Tide Bar, na inibalik, na inibalik og duha. Taon-taon, nanapoy -taon, customer, pa ito po siyang tulo. So, sige ka, sige ka og update. So, hindi siya, hindi siya practical, right? May yung tag-Tide Bar lang yung baligya niya. Daghan ba yung kayo? Yan na kay stock cards sa kada item. So, hassle kayo, mo, sige ka update from time to time. So, hindi siya applicable. Kaya, periodic ang ginagawa. So, ano bang ginagawa sa periodic? Nagka-count lang tayo, ay gumagawa tayo ng physical count at the end of the reporting period. At least once a year. Pero um, kung gusto ka, pwede ni mo buhatog twice a year imuhang physical count. So, unsa maning physical count? From the term itself, imuhang ihapon imong items physically. So, maadto ka dito sa convenience store, mag-close baka. Kadalasan, di ba, December 31 is um, holiday Pag nana mo sa profession po hon, labi nag mo sa audit, December 31 is not a holiday. December 31 is a physical count day or inventory count day. So, 
mga auditors anang December 31, nagpulaw, nagbilar o inihap sa mga inventory. So, pupunta ka sa bodega, pupunta ka dun sa shop or sa store, mag-count kag isa-isa. Ihapon ni mo isa-isa, pila ka buok ang naa dito nga toothpaste, pila ka buok ang naa dito nga soft drinks, pila dito ka buok. So, isa-isa ho ni mo na siya physical count. Kasi, wala kang stock cards na gimaintain sa imuhang periodic system. That is why it is required na mag-physical count ka. Perpetual system naman is not required na mag-physical count kasi updated man ang imuhang listahan. Pero pwede ra po, why not? Hello, gamay na lang kay imuhang imuhang stocks, imuhang maligya, di pa gyud nimo ihapon. So pila lang man tay pag ihap. So in the odd in audit, either periodic or perpetual, you do physical count at least once a year. So mo na siya. Another Another difference is in perpetual, we are, since nag-update man ta, wala ta gagamit o purchases ng account. Purchases account, um, let me remind you that purchases account is a temporary account. Hindi siya nominal, hindi siya real. Ay, hindi, siya, hindi siya real, okay? Hindi siya part sa asset na naadid to sa imuhang financial statement at the end of the year. Gina-close na to na siya sa income statement. So, unsa man ang real account di ay anong purchases. Dito na siya musulod kang inventory. So, si Perpetual, wala na ta gagamit og temporary account. Wala na ta nagagamit og purchases diretso na kay inventory. Kasi nga, again, hindi naman always um, kanang, I mean, since gamay lang man ng ato ang products. Okay? Dagko nga amount, gamay lang na products. So, okay lang na idiretso kay inventory. Periodic, on the other hand, since bulky siya, binalk siya nga transaction, so from time to time, nag-change siya, hassle kayo kung i-update per me, so nagbuhat ang temporary account, we call it purchases. So that's one difference between the two. Sige. And, yung mga sinabi ko, andyan lang din. Okay? So, Illustration, we have here first, pag mupalit ta og merchandise, again, in periodic, nagagamit ta og purchases account, pero in perpetual, diretsyo na sa inventory system. Ma'am, idiretsyo na sa inventory system, does, I mean inventory account, does it mean, ma'am, nga kaning purchases eventually, padulong po sa inventory account? Yes, eventually. Kaya nga, ayan o, oh, sa number 6, natay merchandise inventory. Pero later na, Gamitun sa nato ning temporary account. Next, freight. Di ba pag freight, inventoryable? In periodic system, freight in. Pero diri, ah, diretsyo na inventory. Inventoryable nga yung freight in. Next, return of merchandise. So, balik na to. So, purchase return. Another temporary account. Ito mga temporary accounts lang to eh. Pero, sa perpetual, diretsyo na din credit kay merchandise inventory. Number four, sale of merchandise. Pag nakabaligya ta, okay, baligya. Accounts receivable sales. Pero, pag abot kay perpetual, na atay specific credit on merchandise inventory. So, we have two entries pag abot kay perpetual. Kay periodic, wala. Okay? So, um, kasi nga, di ba pag periodic daghan ng mga products so wala ta kabaluasan ng mga products pero kay perpetual gagmay lang ni nga mga products so let's say isa ra ni kasakyanan oy di dali ra kayo ibutang ang cost pila may cost sa imong sakyanan di ba and then number five, you have here the merchandise sold so we have sales return so actually the same lang sila ni perpetual kaso si perpetual nag-update na po diretso sa ihang inventory So, since na may gibalik sa ito, ah, di i-add na po na itong balik sa ito ang inventory account. And eventually, magbuhat na din tag count, okay, inventory count, na dira na ito ma-realize na, ay, okay, na adi ay koy, merchandise, inventory, and na 65. Pero, si Perpetual, of course, di na ito mag-adjust. Nga naman, from time to time, gipang adjust naman na ito na. Updated siya lagi. So, let's Try to check kung mag-sync ba siya. Sync, okay? Kung mag-equal ba. Kasi at the end of the line, ang imuhang inventory end dapat equal. Either periodic or perpetual imong gigamit. So, perpetual, we have 300. Tanaw na to kung mag-equal ba siya 65. We have 
plus 20, so prepare your calculators, minus 30, minus 240, and then plus 15. And the answer is 65. Ayan, equal nga sila 65. Now, what if sa imuhang entries, there is a perpetual, dili siya equal sa imuhang physical count. So, andito yon Shortage or overage. What if daw, pag count ni mo, ayan, the physical count shows that your inventory is just 55. Therefore, na short ka. Kay ang imuhang records nag-ingon 65, pero pag ihap ni mo si mong bodega, 55 na lang. Siguro gibulos sa to si mong mga empleyado. So, may kulang na 10. So, ang gagawin mo doon, de decrease your inventory, kulang pala ng 10. And then, your inventory shortage. If normal lang na siya nga shrinkage, so from time to time, nagbawasan yung ka, siguro ka nang murag, di na nin mo ma mabantayan, mali imong na punch dito sa counter, Okay, sa mga cashier, and then na-accumulate sa tibok tuig, mo na nga, na difference. So, if that's just a normal difference, we just have to close it into cost of goods sold. So, i-add lang ni mo na siya sa imuhang cost of sale or cost of goods sold. Pero kung abnormal na, like ka ng weed, nagko na dyan ka ayaw ka na makakita na dyan ka, murag na adyo yung mga, mga fraudulent na kakahitabo sa imuhang kumpanya, then you put it into other expenses. So, that is your perpetual and periodic inventory systems. So, let's answer. Um, let's answer the next problem. That is problem 10-4. And the question is, Ano po bang tanong doon? Lagi ka po yung posturya. Kamo na po. 10-4. Yan. So, ganyan yung pangunta na diri? Ano alam? Announce na ito, ha? Inhale, exhale. Ah, the cost of sales. Okay. Okay. Summer Company is a wholesaler of car seat overs at the beginning of the current year. Ayan, meron kang 90 car seat covers, 1,000 each. Mauna siya yung beginning. Ang ato ang buhaton din hiya, compute na to pilay na baligya under periodic and under uh, perpetual. Okay. So, under periodic, ang ato ang formula is we have net purchases plus beginning minus ending. ba? Remember? I hope so. Number one, purchase 800 car seat covers on account. That's 1,000 each. Therefore, you have 800,000. That is net purchases. I purchases. So, wala na akong nagbuhat ang entry, ha? So, I will leave it to you as an exercise. Mag-prepare mong entry para mas masabta ninyo. Pero, diri, ah, diretso na lang na ako siya solve. And then, returned 50 defective car seat covers to supplier. Ay! And received credit. So, purchase return. Kaya ito mag-ibalik kay supplier. Purchase return. And then that is minus 50,000. Next, paid 600 of the car seat covers purchased. Nagbayad ka. Unsa na account ang maapektuhan? Accounts payable. Ang ato ang concern, cost of sale. So, hindi po siya makaka-affect. Pero gagawa ka pa rin ng, ng journal entry. Then, sold 790. Ayan. So, meron kang nabenta na 790. Okay, okay. And then, you received 20,000 car seat covers returned. Ay, ano to? Sales return, right? Okay. And then, you received cash 680. Ay, nagbayad na. Okay. So, gawan nyo na lang ng entries para makita na to. 
kung unsa ang flow. And then lastly, physical count, 60,000. And this 60,000 is your um, inventory N. Yan. So, pwede na ito mag-compute sa ato ang cost of sales. Let us begin with your inventory beginning ay your net purchases. So, your net purchases is 800 minus 50. 800 minus 50, that's 750 net purchases, right? Plus, ang imuhang beginning diri a is 90,000, your inventory beginning. So, urong na lang ta din higamay. So, how do you compute for your cost of sales? So, you have your net purchases, and then you have your inventory beginning, and then we call it your total goods available for sale, right? And then your inventory end, and lastly, your cost of sale. So, you have your net purchases of 750 Your inventory beginning na 90, so add that together, you will have 840 minus your inventory end, and then the net would be 780,000 cost of sale under the periodic inventory system. Okay, so yan. Now, let's proceed naman sa perpetual. Your perpetual, from time to time, nag update ta. So, ato na po ning. Ito lang. Kanilang atong irison. Okay, sa perpetual, hindi naman tayo mag-physical, hindi, I mean, um, the cost of sale is computed not on the physical count, but based on our stock cards. So, Balik na din hi, purchases, and then gibalik, gibalik, gibalik na to itong gibalig ya, I mean gipalit, 50,000. And then, we paid 600 of the seat covers, again, accounts payable po yan. Dito, sold, di ba pag magbalig ya ta? Pag magbalig ya ta, and then we are using the perpetual. Isha-share ko na lang whole screen ko para mas madali, ha? Wait lang. Okay. Kita ng tibok screen. Right. So, this time, mamaligya ta. Balik ka na to ang entries sa pagbaligya. Ito. Sale. Di ba pa perpetual kay na ay minus merchandise inventory? Kasi nga, ina-update natin sa inventory. Therefore, nakabaligya tag 790,000 at 2,000 each. Pero itong concern kay cost. So, that is 790 times, pila ba ang cost? Tag 1,000 kada isa. So, minus 790,000 for our sale. And then, sales return. Nabalikan ta o 20 kabuok. So, that's add. And that is 20 times 1,000. Basically, that's 20,000, right? And then, we have received cash and then may physical count. So, ang iyang pangutan na pila ang cost of sale. Pila ang ato ang nabaligya. Ay, basically, ito lang. 790 minus 20 ang cost sa atong nabaligya. So, when we are using the perpetual inventory system, so, um, kung pila ang atong nabaligya, sales at cost and then sales return at cost pila ba to that 790 and then nabalikan man tag item ng 20,000 therefore our cost of sale our cost of sale is 770 right 770,000 but wait lang Tanaw na to kung under, invent, under perpetual and under periodic, sakto ba nga 60,000 ang 
na bilin. Kasi di ba may gagawin tayong overage or shrinkage. So, atong isink ang duha kung pareha ba sila nga um, 60 ang physical count at year end. So, first you have 90 cars. So, please prepare na kay 90. And then, ipalit kag 800. So, plus 800 yon. And then, hindi na lang ako ibutang. 90. And then, plus 800. And then, return minus 50. Kasi imong gibalik sa supplier. And then, nakabalig ka minus 790. Pero gibalik sa imuha ang 20. Dapat 60 ang imuhang physical count end. So, na kay 90 plus 800 minus 50 minus 790 plus 20 pila ang nabilin. Ay, bakit 30? Ulit. That's 90 plus 800 minus 50 minus 790 plus 20. Ayan, 70. So, do the math. Ang ik, ang end niya is 70, right? Pero pag count ni mo, ang nabilin is 60 units. So, naakay kulang na 10 units. And we call it inventory shortage. 70 ang nasa mong record based sa mong perpetual inventory system. Pero pag count ni mo, 60 na lang. So, kulang ng 10. So, that 10, we call it inventory um, shortage and if the problem is silent, we will assume na normal lang na siya. So, going back, kung normal lang gani, yung sa to, if it is a normal shrinkage, cost of goods sold. So, i-add di hapon sa cost of sales and that was 10,000. Therefore, your total cost of sale or your adjusted cost of sale using the perpetual is 780,000. And like what I've mentioned earlier, under periodic, or perpetual, your cost of sale is always equal. So, 784 periodic, 784 perpetual. Ayan, that is 10-4. Grabe, magto 2 hours na. Isang, chap isang chapter pa lang. Okay, the gross method and the net method. Ay, dito pa pala. Trade discounts and cash discounts. So, again, na, na re review lang ni, kaya ito na na discuss before. When we say trade discounts, these are just discounts nga mo inganyo sa mga buyers nga mo palit. Just like what you can see in the mall, makabutang din to ag 20% discount or 10% discount, trade discount. So, para lang na mainganyo ka nga mo palit. Okay? And these trade discounts are not recorded in the books of the seller or even in the buyer's book. So, dili na siya i-record. But your cash discount, on the other hand, these are discounts given by the seller para mubayad ug sayo si buyer. This is for prompt payment. So, kung mubayad kag sayo, or to be specific, kung mubayad ka within the discount period na kay cash discount or sales discount or purchase discount sales discount on the side of the um, seller of course and purchase discount on the point of view of the buyer and this cash discounts purchase and sales discounts are recordable unlike trade discounts so trade discounts some somehow um are given in a series of discounts. For example, in this illustration, your merchandise is 500,000 less the trade discount na 2010. So, pasabot, 500,000 minus 20% minus 10%. So, series. Okay? So, para lagi jud, mupalit yun si buyer. Napoy uban nga, 2010-10 or 10-10-20. So, dinaghan yun. Pwerte yung ubos sa presyo. So, if that's the case, oh, di sige pukag minus 500,000 minus 20%. And then, minus na pukag 10%. Okay? So, in this illustration, yun ang binigay niya, 10, 20. So, this, I mean, 2010. And this 2010 is what we call trade discount. And again, this is not recorded. And your 5, 10, and 30, that shows your um, purchase discount which is 5% if you will pay within 10 days from the date of sale. So, how do we compute for um, the invoice price? 
So, ang kanig invoice price, mao ni siya ang amount sa imuhang inventory or sa imuhang items na gipalit or gibaligya net of trade discount. So, again, list price. Mao ni ang list price, kanang original. Minus trade discount. Pag human ni mo minus dara, unsa ang mong gawas? Invoice price. And ka na nga invoice price, mauna ang mo appear sa resibo. And dara ang mag-base ang imuhang cash discount. So, how do we compute for the invoice price? Press akong giing mong ganina. Series, minus 20. So, 400 na lang. And then, minus 10 na pod. And your 10% will be based on the latest amount of your list price, which is 400. Daily sa 500 mag-base. And another minus 40, therefore, your invoice price is 360,000, which will appear in the receipt, sa resibo. And kung mubayad kag within 10 days, minus 18, and that is 5% based on the invoice price. Therefore, ang imo na lang bayaran nga cash is 342. So imagine, 500 nga list price, imong bayaran 342 na lang. So that is, grabe no, 150 minus, so that is almost... Wait, 150. That's almost 30% na nakatipid ka. So, hindi na masama. So, that's why ginatawag siya nga um, para mainganyo ka nga mo palit. Kaya nag kay discount. ba? So, the entries are here. Sabi ng, sabi, sabi ng, uh, sabi ko earlier, ang invoice price mo nang mo appear sa imong resibo. Ang resibo, dara ka magbase sa imuhang journal entry. Kaya, 360. So, um, recording your discounts could be gross method or net method. Gross method, you use gross method kung gusto ka mahimong um, safe. So, ayaw lang sa i-deduct sa discount kasi hindi ka pa naman sure kung mag-a-avail siya or hindi. So, just like your normal transaction, gross method. Net method, however, is used kung feeling ni mo um, kampante kay ka nga makabayad siya within the net, I mean the, the discount period, then you use net method. Okay, in that, gindidak na ni mo dayon ang discount. So, grabe ka ka-optimistic in life. Feel yun ni mo mubayad siya. But what if di siya mubayad? Then you will have this account. We call it purchase discount lost. I mean, kung ikaw, wa ka ni bayad sa discount period. So, that's purchase discount loss and this is part of your other expense. Kung ikaw si seller, unya nag-net method ka, unya wala ni bayad, Within the discount period, imuhang customer, so we call it sales discount loss, and that is part of your other income. Kung ikaw si seller. Okay? So that's how you account for your gross and your net method. So I have a strategy here. So atong i-apply sa ato ang next na problem about winter company. Winter Company received quotations for two entities, so you have their company A and B, and we are required to compute for the invoice price and the amount to be paid. So, dalawa pala. So, let's start with A. Pilang invoice price ni A, o pila po ang iyahang um, amount to be paid. So, let's start with invoice price. Actually, pwede nato gamitin itong um, format na gihatag din to as ato ang um, sa, sa book sa itong PDF uh, that is 500 so hindi ko na ipapakita dito ha so kung gamitin lang nato itong kaninga format, so 500 gihapon ihang list price, kaso hindi siya 2010, kundi 2010, 10 so grabe no, grabe yung discount so that's 500 times 20% so, i-minus na to, same lang gihapon, 400 mo gawas, minus 10%, so that's 360, plus additional 10%. So, 360 times 10, so that's 36. So, 360 minus 36, so you have 324 invoice price. We are going to use this kind of strategy. But we have this shorter way or easier way of computing for it. That is just uh, a simple 100% minus your trade discount. So, in this case, that is 500,000, the least price, times. Ang first na trade discount nato is 20, right? 100 minus 20, that's 80%. Times, ang ikaduhang trade discount, that's 10. 100 minus 10, that's 90%. 
times ang ikatulong nga trade discount, another 10. And pila ng 100 minus 10, another 90 discount, 90%. Do the math. And you will have, I guess, the same 324,000. Kaganina, atong gigamit, kaninga strategy, ay nga nga flow, 324,000 gihapon. So, the same. So, this is just an easier way. Kasi, ang, gina, ang since ang ato lang mang ginabuhat is times, tapos deduct, times, tapos deduct, mag-deduct na lang tadaan. So, 100 minus 20, 100% minus 10, minus 10. So, 500,000 times 80 times 9 times 9. So, that's 324. And, eventually, hala, ano na, wala, mani. Okay. And your, the amount to be paid, amount to be paid is your simple 324,000 times the discount of 2%. And how much is that? That is, excuse me, um, 324,000 times 2%, that's 6,480 nga discount, right? So, that 6,480, 6, i-deduct na siya kang 324, so you will have your 317,520. Pero para mas dali, 324 times 100% gihapon minus 2%, that's 98%, and that is still 317,520. Okay, applying the same strategy of computing your discount invoice price and the amount to be paid. Let's apply it in company B. So we have still 500,000. Company B na taha, 500,000 times 35 though. So 100 Minus 35, so that's 65% lang na trade discount. And that would be 325,000. And then, the same 2%, so 325,000 times 98%. Therefore, the amount that you, that you will pay is 318,500. Okay? It's the easier way of computing for your invoice price. And, mo na ba na? Ay, napagyod. 10-7. Bagana ba rin na problem dito sa chapter 10? Fall company began operations in the current year and it uses perpetual inventory system. Ang gipangutana sa ito ang, um, ang gipangutana is the accounts payable, which is very easy. Why? Mali akong gipangutana. Ay, hindi naman sa mali. Ako siyang gituyo. So, during the year, Fall Company purchased um, a merchandise with a gross invoice of 1,000. So, using the gross method, gross method, accounts payable ang ginapangutana. So, you have here 1 million. And then, nagbaya daw kag 50,000. So, that would be minus 50,000. Nga man? Nga minus man, ma'am? Diba ang term is FOB destination? Kung kinsa ka diri, ikaw si buyer. Kung FOB destination and then ikaw si buyer, dapat ang magbayad sa freight si seller. Pero nga nung ikaw ang nagbayad? So, kay ikaw man ang nagbayad, you will be subject to refund. Or, pwede i-deduct dito sa imuhang utang. So, i-offset na lang na kay utang sa iya nga 1 million pero napod siya utang sa imo nga 50,000 kayo ikaw ang nagbayad sa freight which is dapat siya. So, i-deduct na lang offset. So, minus 50,000. Therefore, imuhang utang na lang sa iya is 9 million, ay 950,000. Next, company paid 80% of the merchandise within the discount period since ang ipangutan naman kay accounts payable hindi naman affected si accounts payable sa discount right ang makaapekto lang man i mean ang maapektuhan lang man sa discount is your purchase discount account and ang cash na imuhang bayaran therefore ganun pa rin minus 
um, kano ba? 800,000 kasi 80% of your 1 million. So, that's minus. And then, the remaining 20% was paid beyond the discount period. So, babayaran mo daw ng 20% ang remaining, pero, pila na lang mang yun ang nabili ni mo nga, nga accounts payable. Di ba 150 na lang man? Because, 1 million minus 50,000, that's 950. Minus 800, 150 na lang. So, the remaining 150, binayaran mo na. And then, binenta mo na yung merchandise mo. So, accounts payable has nothing to do with it. Sales and accounts receivable na na. Therefore, your accounts payable, the end of the line, is zero. Nabayaran mo na lahat. Using your net method, on the other hand, I guess there would be no difference. Zero pa rin sa end, pero magkaiba ang records along the way. So, since you are using the net method, that would be 1 million times 98% kasi 2% ang discount. So, you have 980. And then, I net method, accounts payable. Balikan natin. Um, sa, asa naman to? Dara. Ayan. Naka-net daw. So, dapat naka-net sad. So, that's 100. I mean, 980. And then, nagbayad kag 50,000. So, minus na pod. And then, 80%. What is 80% of your 980? That's 784. And then, ang balance, imuhang gi bayaran. So, pila na lang ba ang balance? 980 minus 50 minus 784, then you have 146 na balance. Binayaran mo na daw. So, at the end of the line, again, wala na kay accounts payable. Now, let me change the question and this will become, um, let's just have this as a drill or an exercise. Let's compute for the merchandise inventory. Okay. Compute for the merchandise Inventory. Ay. Inventory end. Using the gross and net method. And let me give you maybe three minutes to answer this. Ayan. Just put in the chat box kung unsang inyo hang answer. And maybe I would give an incentive to the first student who will get the correct answer under each method. Gross and net. Merchandise inventory. I don't believe call. Ayan, na leave call. Ang galing. So, wait lang ha. Ayan. Sige. Lagay nyo lang sa chat box dun sa Google Meet for your answers.
Ayan. Okay na. Ano ba yan? Sige. So, lagay nyo lang sa chat box ang answers nyo. Maruwe pag-asa. Okay. Okay. Alas gis. Isa pa lang ka-chapter. Ayan. So, okay na ba? Wala pa ginag-answer. Merchandise inventory under gross method. Tapos, under net method. Inventory end. Sige. Maruwe lang may nag-answer. Ako na lang. Sige, sabay-sabay na lang ta. First, your gross method under the... Okay, under the gross method. Inventory for um, the transaction of fall company. First, we purchased 1 million cost of merchandise. It's 1 million FOB destination. So, dili dapat kita ang magbayad ani. Pero nagbayad tag 50,000. So, that would be um, a deduction of our accounts payable, but wala naman siyang effect sa inventory, so ignore. And then number three, we paid 80%, so minus 800,000. I mean, inventory pala. So, wala din. 1 million. And then, number four, nagbayad tag 20%, okay, as is, atong inventory, wala na hilabtan, atong utang lang ang nawala. Number five, na maligya ta, and that is 70% of our merchandise and that is 700,000, right? 70% of 1 million. Gibaligya na to ang 700 for 1.2. So, nakaginan siya tag mga 500,000 pod no. And the 30% remained in the inventory end. O, andyan na pala yung clue. 30%. What is 30% of 1 million? So, pwede na ta wala ng compute ani. Diba? So, your inventory end is simply 300,000 for your gross method. How about in the net method? So, since net method ang ginagamit, we have 90,000 inventory beginning. And then, gibaligya daw nato ang 70%. So, that's 980 times 0.7. Therefore, the balance is just 294,000. Or, pwede na din, na din nato siya. That is 980,000 times 30%. Kaya naman siya, 30% remained in the inventory. So again, it's the same, 294,000. And, ayan, ayan. Bakit ngayon lang tong mga answers nyo? 700, um, uh, okay, Loro, ang 700 tsaka yung 686, ito yung cost of sales. So, sakto sana, pero yung 700 tsaka 686 na answers mo, cost of sale to siya. Moto siya ang nabaligya. Ang tinatanong is inventory end. Ibig sabihin, pilang nabilin. Okay? So, you're almost there. I think, nakakompute kag sakto, pero um, na-misinterpret ni mo ang question. Glamour naman, on the other hand, is ano yan? 300 tsaka 294. I guess, Glamour got the correct answer. Ayan. Okay. Very good. It's worth trying. Sige. Sayang yun, Adrian. Pero I'm um, I'm glad na nakuha mo yung concept. So, the bonus points will go to Glamour. Okay. Thank you, Glams. Ang duha jud yung gansiran. Wala na lang dun siya na giveaway, no? <laughs> Charot lang. So, we have Cordero and today is February 2. Okay. So, proceed ta sa next item. So, that's 10-8. And, um, isa gani? Ito itong ipangutanan diri. Ako sa i-review. 
10-8. We were asked to... Kasi, iba yung question dito sa book, tsaka dun sa question na binigay ko sa assignment. Ayan tuloy, nahirapan. Santan so, ha? That's Myriad Company and we talked about... Okay, the net adjustment in the inventory account and the net adjustment in the accounts payable. Ay, gusto ko to. Gusto ko tong question na to. Um, okay. Maklaro pa, wag ihapon. Masig ako ang gilin. Ano na lang, ano na lang. So, ang atong buhaton is, um, tanaw na to ang iyahang effect sa atong inventory at sa accounts payable. So, let's start with number one. Okay, Myriad Company revealed the following purchase transaction in the last few days of the fiscal year and in the first few days after the date kasi may mga panahon ang mga, ang mga companies um, kanang mga transaction nila sa first week sa January, ilagi hapon ng isulo dito sa, sa December. kay para ingnon, dako ilahang sale last year. So, for example, 2020, um, ang katong sale sa January 1 to January 7, i-appeal gihapon to nila sa 2020 para pag mag-prepare sila og financial statements for 2020, dako og sale. I mean, at least man lang madungagan ilang sale, madungagan ilang collection and everything, which is a no-no in accounting. So, kung December 31 nga transactions, kana lang yun. Ang January 1 for the next year or the next uh, fiscal year, kung kanus aman galing mag-end ang imuhang financial statements, ayaw na to siya apila. So, um, mao na siyang ginatawag na lapping or kiting. So, na yung mga yung ana, window dressing. So, um, I think, kung wala pa mo naka-encounter, ana, then pwede niyo siya i-search. Window dressing, lapping, kiting. Mao na siya. And, hindi yan siya pwede in accounting. So, tanawon na to din hikang myriad, basig na siya yung mga transactions sa January, nga gi sa December, or na siya yung mga transactions sa December, nga, Dito niya sa January na record. May mga panahong ganyan din. Sige, let's start. An invoice for 50,000, that's FOB shipping point, was received. So, pasabot, buyer ta. Recorded January 27. Okay? Naguna ang resibo. The shipment was received on January 2. So, try to picture out. Hindi nga pala naka-on ang camera ko. So, wait lang. So, try to picture out. So, mali na po niya ako ma-press. Picture out the calendar. So, you have 27, nag-record kag entry. So, the moment nga na-receive ni mo ang invoice, pag mayingon gani siya, received and recorded, sabot, naka-entry, naka-ana. 27, pero naabot ang inventory January 2. And tungod kay, napaman siya sa, napaman siya sa dagat, Katong mga panahon nga nag-inventory count ta, so the merchandise was not included in the inventory. So, our analysis is first, since ang ginapangutan naman is accounts payable and merchandise inventory. So, we have, um, dali na lang. Um, inventory, and then accounts payable. Sige. For this 50,000 shipment, should this be included in our inventory or not? In this 50,000 shipment, should this be included in accounts payable or not? Or in our purchases? So, let's have first shipping point, buyer ta. Kung shipping point tapos buyer ta, kay kinsa naman ang shipment, I mean ang items kung na sa dagat naglutaw. So, shipping point, that is ours already. Atu na na. So, kung atuan na na, dapat i-appeal na to o count sa inventory. Na-appeal wala. Sabi niya, hindi daw nasali. So, pasabot, i-appeal. So, that would be 50,000 as an additional in additional inventory count. That's 50,000. Next, kay atuan naman ng inventory, dapat nakarecord na po tag accounts payable. Nakarecord ba? Yes. December 27 na record. Okay. So, um, ang inventory, actually, na-appeal siya, count, I mean, naabot siya sa 2 a, kaso sa January na. So, na-appeal gihapunta, pero dili sa December. So, 
ibalik siya sa December kay daily siya para kang January. Accounts payable on the other hand, walang adjustment, sakto lang. Number two. Anyway, your entry here, okay? Um, your entry here in number one is debit merchandise inventory and then credit income summary. Okay? Income summary. Next. Kaliba at the end of the line, pag magbuhat na tag closing entries, kay income summary man na ang partner ni, in ni inventory. So, lagay mo doon. Credit income summary. Number two. An invoice of 75,000 FOB destination was received. So, buyer lang gihapunta. And recorded on December 28. Question. Should we record that item? FOB destination. So, kung napan na sa dagat ng kana nga item, o oh, ayan, nag siya sa dagat, eh, January 3 pa siya ni abot. Kinsa man dapat ang tag-iya? Since FOB destination, si seller dapat ang tag-iya. Pero, nagbuhat ta og entry December 28, which is hindi dapat. Kasi nga, hindi pa sa atin yung item. Therefore, minus 75,000 sa ato ang accounts payable. How about in the inventory? Sabi niya, the merchandise was not included. Tama nga naman na hindi siya i-include. Kasi nga, hindi pa sa atin. So, okay ba? Good. Number three. An invoice for 30,000 shipping point again, invoice, buyer ta, shipping point, ato anana. So, 30,000 na receive ang resibo, January 4. The invoice shows that the goods has been shipped. Agoy, December 28 na ship na di ay, di ba dapat ato anana kay shipping point. Pero, wala na to record. So, mag-record ta dapat og 30,000 nga accounts payable. Wala na to na record by December kasi nga January pa naabot ang resibo. Kung walay resibo, walay record. But for the sake of adjustment at year end, since FOB shipping point man siya dapat nag-record na taan na as accounts payable. So, diri na punta sa inventory. Okay, the invoice shows that the goods had been shipped on December 28 and the receiving report indicates nga naabot siya January 4. The merchandise was excluded. Di ba atuan naman ni? Eh? Atuan na ang item. Wala na to gi. Record. So, mag-record. Plus 30. Atuan na ang item. Wala na to gi-appeal. O gi-hap. Dapat i-appeal. So, plus 30,000 po sa inventory. So, um, anyway, din hiya sa 75. Our entry is debit accounts payable credit purchases. So, gi-reverse lang na to ang kantong rec... Um, Record na to on, Jan on December 28. The report, um, debit, purchases, credit, accounts payable for the 30000 And then, debit, merchandise inventory, and credit income summary for the inventory. Number four. An invoice of 90000 shipping point. Buyer gihapon ta. Shipping point. Ato agihapon ni. Receive December 15. Okay? The receiving report indicates that the goods were received on December 18 but across the face, merchandise not of the same quality. So, gibalik on December 19 and the merchandise was included in the inventory. Sabto na to. December 15, na-receive na nato ang invoice therefore ato na siyang gi-record. Purchases, debit, and then credit accounts payable. Sakto ba nga? Atuwa na nang i-record? Yes, kasi shipping point, ate na yan. But later, um, na-receive na to December 18, pero gibalik na to December 19. So, nagbuhat tag debit accounts payable credit purchase return. So, nawala na po ang accounts payable kaya itong gibalik. So, sakto ba? Sakto. And how about our inventory? The merchandise was included in the inventory. Ay. Kailangan ba natin i-include? I think hindi muna. Bakit? Na-return. Wala pa niya gibalik. So, minus. Minus 90,000. 
hindi niya pa binalik. Although, niabot na unta to, pero mali, so gibalik na to. Pero, gi-appeal niya po na itong account, so, tanggala. Accounts payable, okay na, na-adjust na siya. Niabot og December 15, pero purchase return siya December 19, so, nawala na po atong accounts payable. Nag-net lang. So, no need for adjustments. And then, lastly, an invoice of 140 FOB destination, buyer gihapunta, FOB destination, therefore, daily na ato a kay seller na. Ang invoice na abot, January 4. So, most probably, January na po siya na record. The receiving report indicates nga na abot di ay siya December 29. So, naguna ang goods, na iwit ang resibo. So, kung na iwit ang resibo, na una ang goods, ay dapat mag-record na ta. So, record your accounts payable and that would be an additional 140,000. How about the inventory? The merchandise was included. Niabot siya December 29, gi-appeal siya, sakto lang. So, no need for adjustment. So, ang tinatanong is net adjustment. So, we just have to um, do the math. 50 plus 30 minus 90. And how much is that? 80 minus 90. So, there is a negative 10 or a decrease of 10%. I mean, 10,000 in your merchandise inventory and 75 negative plus 30 plus 140. Therefore, you have a net adjustment of 95,000 for your accounts payable. So, negative 10 and 95. Check lang sa nako, ha? That's 75. Five. Okay. That is for your 10-8. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, ato nang sa nangtiwaso nung discuss. So, we're done with gross and net method. Let's have the cost of inventories. So, cost of inventories, we have these three. The cost of purchase, cost of conversion, and your other cost. So, ang sa maning cost of purchase? Actually, um, your cost of purchase is katong imuhang gibayad tanan-tanan para mapalit ni mo ang imuhang item. So, basically, kung tagpila, tagpila ang item, so that's the purchase price. Kung ang imuhang item, di kan sa gawa sa nasod, and then, syempre, pag sulod anak diri, ang magbayad kag import duties or taxes, o ayan cost of purchase din yon yung mga taxes the freight the handling and other cost ayan kasali din yon and kung ang imuhang ang imuhang business is about manufacturing ay tanan katong materials nga imong gigamit ang katong mga empleyado nga um empleyado nga maoy nagdukdok didto as sa imuhang plywood para mahimo siyang furniture, ato mga nagpintura, nagliha, mga services ato nila kay para ma-produce imuhang gamit. So, kasali din 'yon. Ay, dito pala 'yon sa so cost of conversion, materials lang pala and service. <laughs> materials and services. Okay, materials and services of those people na nag na nag-travel sa imuhang materials ana dito. And your finished goods. So, lahat ng cost of um, ginamit mo para mabili ang item and the item itself, ang cost sa item itself, is your cost of purchase. However, may sinabi dito na any foreign exchange difference will not be considered as cost of purchase. Okay? And then, what if ang imuhang pagpalit sa item is naka-installment or with deferred settlement term? So, pasabot, taas-taas o term. Let's say, um, three years to pay, five years to pay. So, the difference between katong normal nga presyo sa item, kung imong paliton uh, through cash agad-agad, versus the cost of the item na imong paliton ng installment, any difference, we consider it as interest expense. Of course, um, interest is the income that you earn or the, the expense that you incur because of the passage of time. So, kung mapalit kong laptop cash, um, makabayad lang guro kong mga 20,000, pero kay utang man, mga 2 years to pay, so guro makabayad kong 26,000. So, ang difference ng 6,000, interest to siya. That's implied or imputed interest. So, hindi siya cost of purchase. Next, 
cost of conversion. So, muna niya akong gayon ka ganina, katong direct labor, katong mga nagdukdok, nagliha, and everything. And, ano sa pa ba? You have your production overhead, variable and fixed. These are items that will be discussed in your cost accounting. So, although, although may binigay siya dito ng mga few statements to give an overview of what a production overhead or a fixed overhead is, then it's good. Basahan na lang siya, ha? Okay. So, from the term fixed, so magkinaunsa, magamay man o madako ang imuhang ma maproduce nga output, maog yun na siya ang inyuhang um, expenses. So, for example, inyong factory, manaamay, uh, manaamay operation or wala, ang depreciation ang imuhang factory, mauragi hapon. So, let's say 100,000 ang depreciation. O, oh, 100,000 di hapon. Variable, on the other hand, nakadepende kung na ay output or wala. So, an example of this, maybe ka ng, um, yan. An example of this could be kuryente. So, syempre, kung wala'y production, edi wala po may kaon sa kuryente, di ba? So, kung daghan ng production, sige mag overtime, so mas dako o bill. Pero kung 8 hours a day lang mo or less, then mas gamay ang bill. So, variable. nag vary siya. So, mo nang giniingon nga? Variable. And your other costs. So, uban pa ng mga costs. Ako lang yung bisaya. So, you just have to to remember these exclusions. So, sa kadaghag pwedeng i-include, lisod na kayo memorize or lisod na kayo ma-remember, ma then kanina lang mga exemptions. So, ito, abnormal amounts of wasted materials and everything. Lahat ng mga abnormal, exclude mo yan. Storage costs. etong storage costs, kana bang um, sa imuhang bodega? Kuryente sa imuhang bodega or let's say, ang imuhang, ang imuhang business kay mamaligya o ay, imuhang business kay meat shop. So, na kay storage cost tungod sa freezer. ba So, ang imuhang storage kay kailangan ni mo high temp I mean low temperature always so kailangan ka magbutang ditong mga equipment and everything so ang imuhang expenses ana is considered storage co cost hindi siya kasali dun sa um, cost of inventory but if kana nga storage is for materials or goods in process kasali yon so example ang imuhang bodega na kay bodega nga para sa finished goods. Katubang mga items nga pwede nang ibaligya. Ang imuhang cost ana, let's say nagbayad ka guard dira sa bodega, ang kana siya nga cost, hindi na siya kasali sa cost of inventory. Let's say na kay another bodega, ang naa didto katong wala pa nahuman nimo nga mga bangko o mga lamisa, ang mga materialis nimo nga wala pa nimo nagamit na apo didto. So ang security guard nga ang sweldo sa security guard nimo din ha ah, it is still considered inventoryable cost kasi um, those storage cost is for the goods in process or raw materials pa lang. So, andito yun. Storage cost on goods in process are capitalized. So, when we say capitalized, appeal sa cost of inventory. Whereas, kung finished goods na na siya nga storage cost, expense na yan. Administrative overhead, let's say, ang imuhang... Um, uh, president sa kumpanya, of course, di man mo makitaan sa factory, o oh, hindi na yan kasali iyang sweldo. Pero let's say, ang imuhang foreman, okay, kanang foreman nga maudyo'y nag-supervise dito sa factory, kanang ihang sweldo, although administrative yan siya, pero kasali yan siya sa cost of inventory. Kasi doon siya naka-assign sa conversion or paggawa ng products or output ng company. Pero kanin yung mga sales agent nga nasa field, wala man na sila labot sa manufacturing or sa pagbuhat sa product. Kanang inyuhang HR, kanang accountant ninyo, auditor, hindi yan sila kasali. Kanang ilang sweldo, wala na ilabot. Muna ginatawag na administrative expenses. Distribution or selling cost, muna to kong ginaingon. Kanin yung mga salesman, mga agents din, kanilang mga sweldo, wala na na ilabot. Kanin yung marketing, advertising, marketing department, wala na po na sila ilabot. They are considered as Selling expenses. So, yun ang mga hindi kasali. Excluded. Ayan. Cost of inventories for service provider. Provider. Okay. Those directly engaged in providing the service. 
Okay? So, ang sweldo sa imuhang masahista, kung massage ang imuhang um, business, ang um, imuhang manicurista, imuhang pedicurista, ang tigupit sa imuhang, tigupit sa buhok and everything, kung ang imuhang business is salon and spa and everything. So, ang mga sweldo na nila, that is cost of inventory. So, ayun siya. Okay? And that's it for chapter 10. Grabe no, chapter 10 na na-discuss today, but let's be hopeful. Let's proceed to 18. Dalian na to ni Gamay para maka over ay to Allah. Para maka overview pata sa next na chapter. So Reverend Company again ano na naman ang requirement din. Okay, cost ama uh, uh, correct amount of inventory on December 31, 2019. Reverend Company first you have uh, you conducted a physical count and then pag humani mong ihap Nay, 5 million daw ko, no? But, the following items were excluded. So, set up ta direct 5 million. Kani daw nga mga items excluded. Pasabot wala gi appeal. But the question is, sakto ba nga wala sila gi appeal? Let's try to find out. First, cost of goods sold to customer which are being held for customer to call at the customer's convenience. Pasabot lang, Ana, is ready for pick up. Okay? Pag maingon ganit, tag, goods sold for customer's call. Mura lang na siya, naghulat lang tag, kanos ama nawag si customer, na iya na di ay ning kuhaon. So, mura po siya katong specifically segregated good. Okay? So, kung, uh, if that's the case, ay, hindi mo na, hindi mo na inventory yan. Okay? Buyer na yan. Okay? Hindi na sa atin yan. So, hulat na lang tag, i-pick up na niya. Or, manawag ba siya what? So, sakto lang, na-excluded. Ignore. Next, a packing case containing a product costing 500,000 was standing in the shipping room. Okay, andun siya sa shipping room, wala siya sa bodega. So, basically, hindi natin siya na-count. The product was not included because it was marked hold for shipping instructions. Okay, dito na naman tayo. Kani mga terms, gani, pwede nyo na i-take note kay para the next time around, um, na na may idea, ah, pag customer call, buyer, ah, pag special order, kay buyer, pag segregated, kay buyer, ay, pag, pag goods, um, held for consignment, buyer, so, ing ana, okay, next, hold for shipping instructions, so, andun pa siya sa shipping room, sino ba magbibigay ng shipping instruction, si seller na magbibigay ng shipping instruction, so, Naka-on hold pa siya sa shipping department. So, ato pa na, 500,000. The investigation revealed that the customer's order was dated 28. But, January 5 pa siya na bill or January 5 pa po siya na ship. So, sa atin pa rin, 500,000. Wala na appeal count, pero dapat i-appeal. Next, a special machine, 250,000, fabricated to order for a, for a customer. Ayan. This is the other way of saying na this is a special order. And if it's a special order, ano sa ganito? Di na na ato ah, kay buyer na na. Furthermore, sabi niya, it is specifically segregated. Ayan. Naalagi siya sa shipping room, pero nakasegregate na siya specifically. Special order. Pag yun, ingon siya fabricated to order. So, kung unsa sa mga specific uh, specific na instructions ni customer nga, ah, I want this, I want that. Dapat ingani yung color, dapat ingani yung kwan. Una special order. Pag nahuman na na, nasegregate na na, maskin pag naapan na sa sulod si mong bodega, sa shipping room, or what, ayaw na nag-apila. That is no longer yours. That's waiting for pickup. Ipsay muha na ng customer. Sabi niya pa, the, cost, um, the customer was billed and the machine was excluded from the inventory, although it was shipped on January 5. So, sakto lang. Aksakto lang na ato siyang gi-exclude bahalag January 5 pa siya na ship. It is a special order. But take note, um, if, if it is a special order, fabricated to order for a customer, pero wa pa siya na human, okay? hindi pa siya finished product, that is still part of the inventory of the seller. Pwede lang na, na ni, pwede lang na ni mo siya ilahi once it is finished. 
okay kung human na siya pero kung wapasya na human that is still goods in process miskin pa og special order and if it's still in process imuha gihapon na pero dito naman sabi niya it was finished so it is finished hindi nakasali next goods in process costing 300 held by an outside processor for further processing so in process siya pero dili sa to ang factory gi process sa sa lahi ng kompanya atin pa rin yun. Pinagawa lang natin sa kanila. So, add mo yun. 300. Next. Goods costing 50,000 shipped by a vendor, FOB seller, and received by the entity kin sa tadere, buyer. This is FOB seller. FOB seller is the same as FOB shipping point. Therefore, libre lang kutob dito kay seller. So, gikan kang seller, padulong sa tua, atuan na nga items. And, um, na ship December 31, so, nana siya sa dagat, December 31, naglutaw, atuan na to kay FOB Shipping Point or FOB Seller. And, na receive January 10, so, i-appeal na to, kay atuan naman di ay. That is 50,000. So, do the math, we have 5 million plus 500, plus 300, plus 50, and I think that is 5,850,000, and that is our total inventory at year end. The same analysis for 10-19. Okay. Now, not to say, say ganap, dari kay 10-19. Ano man yun? Ay, bakit? Ano term? Okay. Shindig Company is preparing 2019 year and financial statements. Ayan. Prior to adjustment, set up na punta drig 7, 6. Ayan. Next. Items. Goods costing 250 were received January 5. The related invoice was received and recorded January 12. Okay. The goods were shipped, FOB shipping point, kinsagayta de ria, buyer. Kung buyer ta, tapos shipping point, ato na dapat ni. So, dapat, we are going to add this in our inventory. That's 250. Next, goods costing 850 were shipped um, to a customer. So, pasabot kita de seller de ri. FOB shipping point. So, kung kita seller, tapos FOB shipping point, wana natay labot, iyahanan na. The goods were included. Ay, ayan. Dapat wala na ganit tayo labot. Uh, it's included in ending inventory, although the sale was recorded in 2019. So, we daw. Therefore, atong tanggalon. Next. A 350 shipment of goods to a customer. Kinsa ta dere? Seller. Sige, nag-ship ta kang customer, FOB destination. So, kung FOB destination, tas kita si seller, dapat Ato apa ni. Pero, was not included. Okay. Dido kasali, pero dapat kasali pa. The goods cost 260 Ah, okay. Si 350 di ay, appeal na na mark up. Mau na tong sales price. When we compute for inventory, again, we are concerned with the cost. Therefore, we will record the 260 or we will add the 260 cost. Okay? Ayun. Next, an invoice for goods costing 350 was received and recorded as a purchase. Kinsa tadere? Buyer, purchaser. The related goods shipped FAS or fast free alongside. Unsa ganito basta free alongside? Kinsa tag iya? Si buyer. Okay? Si buyer magbayad sa. Unsa ganito yung free along. Uh, free alongside. Kutub lang si seller sa. Wharf. Okay? Pag abot dito sa wharf, pag sakay ana sa cargo, and then pag abot ana dito sa buyer, si buyer na bahala tanan. Therefore, kay buyer na ni. And then this time, kita si buyer. Kita pala. Kita dahi si buyer. Okay? So, na-receive siya January 5 and were not included. Ay, dapat appeal na. So, that's plus 350. Ay, makapeso sign siya. That's 350. Next, again ha, free alongside, kutub lang sa wharf or sa dock. 
D-O-C-K sa doc, C seller. After that, si buyer na bahala. So, majority of the um, the trip, okay, ang travel, ang journey sa shipment, si buyer bahala. So, that's buyer's inventory. Sabi niya, we're not included, kaya i-add. Next, the 1,050,000 shipment to a customer. So, kinsa ta dire? Seller. Nagbaligya ta kay customer. FOB destination. So, kotob sa destination. Libre na to. So, ato apa ni. Okay. Niabot dito kay customer January 5. And, hindi din natin in-include sa ending inventory. Diba? Ato apa man ni. So, add. And again, we are concerned with the cost. And that is 840,000. So, 7.6 plus 250,000. Minus 850 plus 260 plus 350 minus, I mean, plus 840. That's a total of 8450 million. 8.54, ayan, million. So that's for your inventory on December 31, 2019 for Shindig Company. So wag na lang natin i-review yung answers nyo. Titingnan ko na lang later. Okay? Okay. Ah, ano to? Norin. Recorded ba gihapon ni ma'am? Guys, I mean, ang discussion po. What do you mean by recorded? Um, ako siyang gi-record? Yes. Hapit na siya mag-give up. Ay, you lost your connection. Hala. Bakit? Anyare. Hala, may nagaganap na ano. Okay. Bakit walang connection? Connections, connections, connections. Patapos na rin. 